I'm happy to introduce Mayo Thakur. We are from the same undergrad, undergrad college, IIT Delhi. Um, he did his PhD at the University of Rochester and is right now an assistant professor in the University of Missouri, Rona. Uh, his research interests are in network and graph algorithms, common tool optimization, time series analysis, simulation and modeling, and co complexity theory, which is dear to the hearts of many of us here. Um, he's also held positions at Northeastern University, Alumas Labs, Equinox, Equinox Corporation, MSR, Philips, and so on. So I'll give to my to what talk was that about the city. What was the list again? Uh, Northeastern University, Los Alamos Corporation, Equinox, no, Los Alamos Labs, Equinox Corporation, MSR. Yeah, these are some short term positions. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you talk about net and the city. Hi, thanks Gagan for the introduction. Um, it's nice to be here. Um, first time in California, actually. So <laughs> this is very strange because I've been in the U.S. for eight years now. Okay, um, uh, the talk is going to be on net and the city. This is uh, ongoing work with uh, uh, collaborators at Virginia Tech, Northeastern, and Los Alamos. Actually, um, I am going to. Uh, first motivate why we want to look at city nets, what those are, um, and then basically describe how we build our model of uh, city nets. Uh, then we, I'll present some analysis and how, what the structure of uh, the city net looks like. And then at the end, uh, I'll present uh, some uh, analysis on attacks that we have. Um, okay, so uh, up front, let me just describe what uh, city nets is, define what city nets are. There's no. Oh, I see. Yeah, I see. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay. All right. So uh, when I say a, when I when I when I refer uh, to a city net, what I mean is exactly this. I mean a set of routers, the set of routers and hosts and links that are located in a particular metropolitan area. So think of New York and think of its boundaries. Well, it's not defined well, but let's say I define the boundary for you, and then think of every. Uh, router, end host, and link that is uh, located inside of that boundary. That's what I mean by the city net, okay, the connection there. That's what I mean by a city net. Um, so what we want to do is to uncover the structure for large metropolitan areas like New York City, like Chicago, and we actually have done that. Uh, the reason for doing that is the following. A lot of uh, study has gone into, a lot of people have studied the general structure, the internet at large structure. Uh, and also there has been a lot of study in the relevant sub-networks. For example, ISP structure has been studied. Autonomous system structure has been studied. What we are doing is looking at the local structure, the geographically local structure of the internet. Uh, why do we want to do that? Well, the internet as, as an infrastructure has grown with humans. And humans have grown the most in cities. So what we want to do is look at how the infrastructure has go, grown in dense areas, dense both with, with respect to human population uh, and in, in, in terms of importance because cities are where the businesses are, cities are where uh, the universities are, uh, cities are where most of the people are. Uh, uh, in terms of computer networks, sorry, in terms of computer networks, what this will do is facilitate network simulation studies. Uh, one, you'll see some aspects of it uh, where you, we we uh, uh, study the vulnerability or the robustness of networks. Uh, what we want to do is to develop a methodology that is you, that anyone having access to you know a few nodes and stuff can create a structure, can create a map of city nets, um, and then use that for uh, simulations. Uh, we are going to release, uh, we plan to release uh, models for the research community. So from what the the, it will come out of, of, of this research, we want to package it and release it in, to the network uh, community. Because the structure, the, the, the knowledge of city nets, uh, uh, the structure of the city is, is not known. Um, okay, uh, one thing that I want to, yes? You mean models or data? Exactly what do you plan to release? We can't release all the data because some of the data is sensitive. So what we'll do is we'll an anonymize and release it. If, is, is that what you're asking? So both. Is actually, it a mathematical model or is it a, a model? Uh, we have what, it's actually data from real world. But we also plan to do research and you know, from that real world data, make mathematical models. 
Okay, both of both both. But you can't release all data that we have because some of it is actually sensitive and. Um, but we can anonymize and release. So even even real data we can anonymize and release. So for example, not have any IP addresses. Just give them integers. All right. That would. Um, Okay, one important distinction between our model, I'll describe the model, but uh, before I start, our model of city nets or networks in general for now, a, uh, but let's go with the city nets, is a path view. So we don't look at a network as a graph, which is what typically you would think. What we look at a network, when I say city nets, uh, a model of city nets, I, I, I mean a set of nodes and a set of paths on that nodes, on those nodes. And then you can think of attaching traffic weights and stuff on that. But this is the crucial difference. It's paths as opposed to, it's a path view as opposed to a graph view. Now why do we want to do that? Uh, this uh, basically uh, two reasons. Uh, routing on the internet is policy based. Just because there is a, a path in, 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 on the internet doesn't mean any packet will travel on that path. So we believe that the path view is the more correct view. All right. Also, it has been shown that uh, the paths on the internet have this dominant paths phenomena where at steady state, all traffic between this point and some other point is dominated by a single path, it, even though there are multiple paths that could go. It's changing slightly because of new technology and stuff, but still, uh, the internet shows dominant paths. So again, when I say uh, a city net, what I mean, or a model of a city net, what I mean is a set of nodes and a set of paths over those nodes. So I'll describe all that in, in a later slide, but roughly speaking, this is the boundary of the city. These are nodes right outside the city. So that's what I call the border nodes B. Uh, these are the set of routers, uh, called, also called internal nodes. So these route traffic, and these are a set of destinations or end hosts. Okay, that's the basic model. Okay, what this shows here is that you have a small cut, but we'll come to that. But the basic uh, idea is path instead of graph. You're thinking only of physical nodes, not wireless. No, at this point it's just, uh, and also you can think of what level, I, I, is it level 2, level 3? We are looking at the IP level, router level. Okay? People have done work at the AS level, so what is the AS level connectivity? Okay? Or people have done at, at even lower levels, for example, what is the physical connectivity? We are looking at the IP level. Um, Are you going to get to it later, or is it a good time to ask about the length of the paths, typical length of the paths? Uh, I'm going to get to that. Uh, good question, but uh, uh, yeah. So length is the two is, is the unweighted length and the weighted length. Weight is hard, so we have not done that. We have some models where it's a, weight is basically traffic or capacity, uh, and uh, it's hard, but we have some models for that. We'll come I'll come to that. Uh, so the problem statement is we want to design a robust methodology. Here the uh, the the the, the idea is, uh, in, uh, in addition to the data, we want to develop a methodology for inferring realistic path network views of city nets. Okay? Uh, what do I mean? I've described what path view is. What do I, what do I mean by realistic? What I mean by realistic is, first of all, it, it, should be defined, it, it should be inferred from real data. And secondly, even though it's impossible to have all routers, there's just too many of them, and all end hosts in your model, uh, it should be realistic from a point of view, whatever metrics you're interested in, uh, your, your uh, or whatever metrics common uh, simulation studies are interested in, uh, the model should have those properties. The model for those metrics should satisfy uh, the property of the real world. Um, so our view, as I just mentioned earlier, is the router level view. Uh, each node, think of it as a router or an end host. Not in, uh, in a lot of different studies, each node is an autonomous system. Or you can think of each node as an ISP, or you can think of each node as a uh, so this when I say the router, I mean an IP router at the IP level, not at the physical level. Okay? Because logical connectivity could be different from physical connectivity. There has been work, in particular uh, work by uh, Breitbart and I think someone at Google actually uh, at the physical connectivity, but we are not doing that. Um, another thing that we are not interested in, and that is from this, is we are not interested in the transit traffic. If you see all paths start from outside and end inside. There could be a path that starts from outside, goes inside and comes out. We are not interested in that. We will not model that. Why? Because we are interested in how the city is connected to the outside world and vice versa. How the outside world is connected to the, to the, to the city. So we are ignoring transit paths. Okay? Other thing is we actually are interested in, in, in uh, forward connectivity and backward connectivity. Uh, however, 50% uh, of the paths have been shown to be symmetric, and because of the way we do, we namely trace routes, backward connectivity is harder to do. So all our, even though I'm claiming 
I will be sort of implying that it holds for both forward and backward. Actually, I'm, I'm going to caveat it by saying that it's only forward parts, parts. Okay? Uh, but if you ask me to hazard a guess, I would say that the forward and backward would not be much qualitatively different. Okay? But our models are not based on backward paths at all, it's just forward paths. Uh, obviously, the, the issue here is that a path from here to here might be, path from A to B might be much different from path from B to A. But it has, uh, but typically it's 50% of the paths are in fact actually symmetric. And a lot more are, have, uh, share many other properties. Okay, so uh, some related work. Um, this is a ton of activity. I'm uh, missing a, a lot of stuff here. But I'm just want to give you a flavor of the, uh, the kind of work that has been done. Uh, different views, different uh, views of the internet ha have, have been looked at. So the router level view, uh, and this is for the general internet. Ours is only for the cities. Uh, so there's router level view, you have the autonomous system uh, view, or the ISP view. Okay? Also, uh, related to our work, in fact, a very crucial part of our work is knowing which IP address falls in which city. So we are using work that other people have done on geolocation. Given an IP address, how do you locate where, what is the geography, what is the latitude and longitude of that? Uh, people use different kinds of uh, triangulation techniques, uh, both in, uh, uh, in open research community, and there are whole companies, and we are using some data from these companies, even though we could, in principle, do all of the, their work and then use that data, but we are not. We are using it as a black box. Um, geographic properties of routing have Right. Whose data did you use? Uh, yeah, I'll come to that, but it's uh, Akamai, uh, Digital M, Envoy, and Quova. So you use three sources, and they are all uh, into all that, all this. Uh, ge geographic properties of routing. So uh, if a packet has, be, has to be sent from Mountain View to New York, how does it travel geographically? Does it go to Chicago first? Um, they, that has been studied. It has been shown that it's not optimal, but a lot of the times it, it's optimal in terms of distance. Um, uh, again, uh, this is ours. I will look upon our work as a part of the bigger study of understanding the internet and how it has grown, which has uh, a ton of work in that. Uh, in particular, I note uh, uh, this is the first work that uh, introduced uh, the show that hinted that the uh, internet uh, graphs or internet uh, has this power law structure where you have, uh, which is the reason for efficient uh, routing, but also uh, has. Uh, leads to vulnerability. So that's where we, we look upon our work as a part of the bigger uh, internet uh, visual um, tomography. There's a, there's a, a typo there. Uh, part, we are not doing any visualization though. Um, uh, and again, uh, even beyond internet, there's work on complex networks, so social, social networks, internet, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, power uh, networks, so electrical power networks. I've done some work that is related, but uh, it's not part of this talk. Okay, so what is the basic methodology that we have? So our goal, again, is to find a path model. Uh, so I want to give you a set of nodes and a set of paths uh, over those nodes uh, for a given city. So let's assume a city like Chicago, for example. Chicago is, if you have a specific city in this talk, I'll show Chicago's example. Okay, uh, so I want to give you that. I want to give you a path model for Chicago so what, how do we do it? Uh, the first thing we do is find the set of all IP addresses that lie within uh, Chicago. Okay? This we do using data sets. So we are actually not doing research in here. We're just using other people's research. Um, now after that, what we do is we sample, since we can't run tra trace routes, our basic methodology is trace routes. Uh, since we can't uh, run uh, trace routes to all of them, we sample intelligently so that uh, per trace route, the number of things, number of nodes and edges uh, discovered is improved. Okay? Then we actually trace out from a lot of different vantage points, close to 44 vantage points, uh, to every IP in that, in, in, in that set that we have, in that sample set that we have. We clean data, and then we build a path-based model. Uh, we call it the BID model, and you sort of saw the glimpse of it, and I'll come back to it. Uh, but essentially, that's what we do. You have a sample set inside a city, and you have all these sources. You run trace out from all these sources to this, this sample set, and uh, you get your path-based model. And we do analysis after that. Um, okay, so the first step was uh, the, basically the IP2 geographic mapping. Uh, this, as I mentioned in an earlier slide, it's an active area of research. We are not doing research in this. We just take data from, uh, uh, these are, this is actually proprietary data, but if we really wanted, we could spend effort 
into uh, and build our own system. People have done that in the research community as well. Um, so these are all uh, well-known uh, leaders in their field. Uh, what we do is take these three data. The data doesn't match because of obvious reasons. It's not exact. We don't know where the city ends and the suburb starts. Uh, one thing we want to note is that we want to consider the metropolitan area because we don't want to lose out on uh, home customers, for example, blocks, blocks related to home customers. That's just one. So we want to look at not just, not just downtown, but the metropolitan area as well. Again, that definition is also not clear. Uh, but basically what these data give us is for each IP, uh, it gives us which uh, is, it gives us a name, which is basically the name of the city. Actually, they do it for by blocks. Uh, but then you have to merge these data. How do you uh, how do you how do you merge these data to get one uh, clean data? Okay, the basic um, the basic method that we have, the basic tool that we have, as have other studies done, uh, is uh, is trace routes. What trace route is is, is basically you start from a point, it gives you the route from that point to any other point in the internet. Okay, so this is an example of an actual trace route from one of from our data set. Uh, so you wanted to find out the path, the forward path to uh, this IP address, and this gives you that. Uh, we are not using the time information, but uh, you could use time information for uh, waiting, for example. But you're not doing that uh, as of now. Uh, this is basically an internal bookkeeping that we have. Okay, so uh, the trace route is uh, a utility that's been used a lot in uh, network studies. It uses the time to live uh, attribute of IP packets. What you do is you say, okay, that IP packet should expire in say five steps. So at the fifth hop, uh, it expires, and then just by the way the protocols work, uh, the, hopefully the router will send you a message saying, oh, your packet expired. So you know what the fifth router is, essentially. They're not re required to send it, but uh, that's why trace routes a lot of the times are not successful. In fact, the, the success rate is only about 10% or so. Okay, but that's what we have to live with. Uh, so what we have is, yeah. Sorry. No, that's so fine. That's from the trace routes, I seem to remember there's two different ways of doing it with ICMP and UDP. Yeah, we do. I'm, I'm, yeah. Okay. I, I don't mention that, but we do all sorts of optimization, which is the point of this slide, actually. Uh, there's lots of different ways to do it. We choose ICMP because UDP raises more flags. So what you have to be careful about trace routes is that First of all, they can take a long, long time. So if without our optimization, which I'm not mentioning here, so 100,000 trace routes, which is a typical number for a city, will take about two to six weeks. Okay, depending, it depends on how many successes you have had. We do trace routes. Uh, we do, uh, for example, we don't send three packets, which is normally uh, what they do. Uh, we remember, we're not interested in you know very fine structure because you know it's not possible to get all the. Uh, it's more important to get more. Uh, structure than to get every single small one of them. So we do these uh, optimizations. Part of that is using ICMP packets, okay? And then we reduce it to a reasonable number, so like one day for uh, 100,000 trace routes, essentially. So the, the the utility that we have is basically a utility for collecting trace routes, uh, and it has tunable options, including that. But the way we, we do it is always use ICMP. Uh, it works across machines because other machines. Uh, uh, because sources in different uh, locations have different operating systems, it does have error recovery. So if you stop it at a certain point, you can start it up uh, without losing much data at all. Um, so I'm not going to go into the optimization, but some effort was spent there uh, in trying to make sure that this was reasonable, because this is just not reasonable. Okay, so what we did was we chose 12 of the 25 largest cities in terms of population within the U.S., and we chose cities such that they were distributed across the U.S. It just so happens that this, there's no big city here. Otherwise, you see that it's sort of well distributed. So you have stuff there, uh, stuff here, stuff there, and stuff here. Okay, so there are 12 cities in our study. So uh, the reason for looking at multiple studies is because we also want to look at across city similarities or differences. Okay, so that's the destination cities, and that's the cities in our study. The data that we use are the following, uh, the data sets that we use. Uh, we have Skitter, which is basically uh, Kaida's uh, net measurement tool. And the data that we used, uh, this is not the, all the data that we have, but the data that we used had, 20, had trace routes from 20 vantage points. What Skitter does is basically it has a set of uh, IP addresses that periodically it trace routes to. And some of that were useful for us, so we took that. All right, so not all of data is used here, but you took that. But uh, they use 20 vantage points. 
Planet Lab is just a network of computers. Uh, you can get slices on it. We use 14 such vantage points across the world, but most of them in the US, and we trace out to our data. Uh, so, and in, in addition, we used our uh, vantage points, 10 in numbers. Basically, we asked our, our, our friends, can you lend us a computer for you know, seven days, 10 days, whatever, and we'll run trace out from that. Okay, so overall it's 44 uh, vantage points. One crucial thing is that recent studies have shown that if you do not trace out from, uh, if you do not, don't run these uh, trace out based studies from multiple vantage points, lots of vantage points, you could get uh, misleading results. Okay, so that's why a lot of uh, effort was spent in that. Uh, one obvious thing to consider was, and we did, was rocket fuel which basically maps autonomous systems or actually ISPs. Okay. Uh, so they have mapped, for example, uh, Verizon. Uh, however, when you look at that data, the amount of data we could use wasn't enough because they're using very few trace outs. So we decided not to use them. Uh, just to give you an idea of the amount of data that we have for, uh, per city, and Chicago in particular, uh, so bigger cities have more data, that's why Chicago is almost twice the average, um, is about 850,000 trace outs that for an average city, of which I said that you know, not all trace outs complete. Only about 100,000 trace routes did complete. However, we don't just throw away all non-completed trace routes. The amount of uh, trace routes we use, the number of trace routes we use uh, for an average city is about 200,000. So that's a lot of data. For uh, Chicago, it's about, uh, it's more than half a million. Um, okay. Uh, the first step I said was to find a set of IP addresses to which to, from, uh, so, so that we could trace out to that. Now, one thing we found was if we just randomly sample, a lot of IP uh, address space is just wasteful. It's just not used at all. If you randomly sample, is that good or do you need some other uh, sampling? What we found out is that we actually need some uh, other uh, sampling. Uh, so what we did was the following. Let me describe the result and then I'll say how we did it. Um, what we did was we took the IP address space, the IP addresses within a city, and then we broke it up into blocks, and I'll describe how the blocks were made. Um, and then what this shows is the number of IP addresses versus population, and it shows the number of blocks versus population. And you can see a much better correlation with the number of blocks than with the number of IP addresses. What does it tell us? Basically what it tells us is that the number of blocks is a closer description of the complexity of a city net than a number of IP addresses. So what we did is we did block sampling. Instead of sampling randomly from IP addresses, we had these blocks and then we sampled uniformly randomly from those uh, blocks. And uh, again, you might ask, well, it's just correlated with the population. How, does you, how do you know that it's, uh, it gives you more complexity? Uh, to tell you the truth, I do, we don't. However, if you look at the performance in, in terms of uh, discovering elements of city nets, nodes and edges. Uh, forget what this is written here. Uh, what we see is that if you do this uniformly randomly sample from uh, IP addresses and versus uh, our block sampling, we get 120% improvement. Okay? What this means is, uh, for us, for the, same, for the same number of trace routes. So if you do 10,000 trace routes uh, with uniform sampling versus block sampling, uh, ours is 120% better in, across all uh, uh, types of nodes and edges that we looked at. So this is, this is tiny, forget that. This is interior nodes. So these are, these are connections between routers inside Chicago. Uh, these are total number of edges. These are I to D edges means these are connections between routers and end hosts. Okay? So across every metric that we looked at, we got a huge uh, improvement, which gives, tells us that it is at least much better than the most trivial way. Uh, there could be better approaches for sampling. Um, what we did uh, for the sampling uh, part was uh, we took the data that we have and from the, uh, from, from, from the geo sources, and the data already has some, so the idea there was to get to cluster. So this is basically a clustering problem. So we want to cluster IP addresses such that all IP addresses that have uh, similar routing behavior are clustered in one. Because if you do uh, trace out to one of them, you know, that, you know the result for the others as well. Okay? The geolocation uh, data that we had already had some uh, block information. 
Uh, in fact, uh, the BGP, for example, when you, when you do this routing, it already has this block information. But we still had the problem of not aggregating too much, because if you aggregate too much, then you lose you know, the information. Because remember, what we would be doing is doing block sampling here. So we had to find nice, uh, a, a nice middle ground. Okay? Um, so that's, that's what we did for the block sampling part. Um, I've sort of described the BID model, but just to formally state what the BID model is, uh, we divide, we have a set of uh, nodes, and they are divided into three sets, uh, partitioned into three sets. The border nodes are nodes that are just outside of the city. The interior nodes represent the routers inside the city. The, de de the destination road nodes represent the end host within the city. Okay, so this is just the, every path that we have goes from, starts at a border nodes, ends at a destination node, and must go, uh, must have at least one router here. Okay, only some paths we found didn't have this structure. But most paths do conform, in the real world, do conform to this structure. Okay? So note that we are ignoring what happens beyond this, because we are interested in comparing, in interested in looking at the connectivity of the city to the outside world, or vice versa. Okay, that's why... Estimating how much of the data is obfuscated from you by NAT. There's lots of little subnets in my house, for example, where you can't tell what's inside because yeah, of NAT. Yeah, all, all those are difficulties. But, no. And so you sort of expect that lots of endpoints would, would be like that with small numbers. But I'm curious if there are any big numbers that are hidden from view, like um, major subnets and corporations or I, If you had to ask me, I would say uh, yes, it's a possibility. But if you ask me for an estimate, I would not know that. We can only know. Uh, one thing we did do was not throw away incomplete trace routes. So even if you have those, you would probably get incomplete paths that just, after that point, they just give up and they can't go beyond. So what we did was we didn't throw them away, we did the best we could do, sort of attach a, a dummy node there. So we don't know which nodes correspond to, you know, if Microsoft has a, has a server blocking everything. We don't know which destination node corresponds to that, but there's something that possibly corresponds to that. Okay? So, and, and if it's a big chunk, it will have higher weight. Uh, we'll see that later on. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's, that, that's the obvious problem. Uh, there's so many things uh, that are hidden, um, and that is any trace out study will have this problem, essentially. Uh, the, you could do st some, uh, okay, I, I should mention that there's some other uh, optimizations that we didn't do that we sh could do. For example, people do source routing. Okay, when you ask us to forward a packet from here to here via this node, for example. We didn't do that. Uh, that could increase the the amount of nodes we see. Uh, however, we trace starting with so many places, if you ask me to uh, guess, I don't think it would matter in, in our case. Uh, typical, I, I would also mention that typical trace out studies are not done from these many sources, except rocket fuel. Um, but rocket fuel was traced out into a small uh, set. Um, again, the border nodes are connect uh, city nets to the outside world. The interior nodes are routers inside the city. And destination nodes are end hosts. Um, and we are only interested in outside to inside uh, traffic. Okay, so, uh, and again, what we did was we have the trace routes, and we want to go to the BID model. What we do is just cut it right at the border, essentially. Okay, uh, also some optimization, we only, uh, we only keep trace routes that at least go two hops in, into the city. That will, otherwise you can get a, a path that has one B node followed by a destination node. We didn't want to do that. Uh, we didn't lose too many uh, nodes because of that, though. Um, for now, we still have the problem of if I give you a path, I haven't labeled it as an interior or a destination node, okay? Because what can happen is the this node is a destination node one, and it is a, a, a non-destination node. It's a an interior node in the other. Uh, but it's a fairly easy thing to if you think about it. Uh, suppose x x is a node. Okay, in our, all our traces that we have. A border trace is simply a trace that is cut at the border. Uh, so x is the node, and if we have ever seen it being, being uh, forwarding a packet, we know that it's a router, because endos will not forward packets, typically. Uh, so we label it as an I node. Uh, on the other hand, if it's a dead end, which means that it's the last node on an, unfinished, on an unfinished trace route, what that means is that someone in the internet thought that it could forward a packet, right? Because, and assuming that, that someone was right, it's probably a, a router. So we label it as an I node. Everything else we label as a destination node. Okay? So uh, that's our simple uh, heuristic. Again, there is, there is, there is uh, uh, inaccuracies in all these steps, but that's just the nature of the game. 
However, because of all this accuracy, uh, inaccuracy, sorry, uh, data validation becomes an important step. So the steps that we did take uh, to validate our data, um, we asked the following question, is our data enough? Have our models converged? So we did some uh, statistical tests for convergence, um, and I'll describe two of them as follows. So let's look at how many network, new network elements we are discovering uh, per trace route. Actually, it's not per trace route, but it's per source. So what we did was for one city, in this case, uh, we took all the trace routes that we have, divided them randomly into 10 buckets, and see, okay, what is the, uh, the, the, the return for this one? And you can see that it's, it's, at, at that point, it's very insignificant. Okay, um, so that gives us that, you know, it's at least as far as trace route studies are, are concerned, we are converging. The other one that is sort of non-standard, this is standard, the other one that is sort of non-standard is the factorial test, which we basically are asking the following question. Uh, here it was just a simple, you know, number of nodes, number of elements, uh, number of edges. Here the question is not that, here the question is, look at the in-degree distribution, let's say, in this plot. Look at the in-degree distribution, and is that is that curve, is that metric converging? So what this plot shows is, this is the, the solid line is the in degree for four sources, okay, for a particular city, I think it's Chicago, for a particular source, just for its four sources. And these, the, the, the dots here, above and below, are two standard deviations above and below for three sources. So think of three sources and the, and the plot that you get. And now go to four sources in the plot that you get. And what this shows is that within a band, and what this shows is that the four sources is between two standard devi deviations above and below the three sources. Okay? So even with three sources, we are, or four sources that is, we are sort of converging. Okay? The standard deviations here, for example, are really, really small compared to the mean. Okay? Each point here, by the way, has been, you know, each point here represents multiple runs. Okay, so the way you compute this point is, that's why, that's the reason it's called a factorial test, is you choose, so you take your uh, uh, set of sources, you take your set of destinations, divide them into sets, sorry, <laughs> divide them into sets here, and then take subsets, okay, and you take lots of subsets so that you get statistically significant results. Okay, similarly for the out degree, again, uh, in fact in this case only one standard deviation above and below, uh, it's still converging. Okay, so this gives us confidence that at least as far as we could do in using this methodology, our results are, have to be believed or can be believed. Um, any questions so far before I go on to the results uh, section? Okay, so now that we have constructed these uh, models uh, for city nets, so again our model is set of nodes and paths that have de been derived from actual trace route experiments from 44 different sources. Um, okay, what can I say about the structure of city nets? How are they different from the internet at large? And our, one question that we are asking here is about the robustness. I'm going to describe a little bit of all of them. Um, as expected, the number of nodes increases linearly uh, with the number of blocks in the city, sort of linearly. It's well correlated. Okay, so this is just that, I'm, sh I'm sorry if these, these are really small, but this is the number of border nodes, this is the number of interior nodes, so this is a B, I, and this is the number of destination nodes. Okay? Uh, again, the correlation with uh, IP ad number of IP addresses is not that good at all. This is much better than the number of uh, correlation with IP ad addresses. One interesting thing is, uh, I think you asked about the, depth, the, the length of these paths. The length of these paths are, are pretty, they lie in a pretty small range, so most of the paths, note that there are no paths less than two because we are imposing this structure that you must have at least one, um, uh, at least one uh, interior node, actually three, because I'm counting the number of hops, the number of nodes, okay? So between three and about six, uh, mo that, that's, the, that's the number of hops for almost 99% of the paths, okay? And the different plots are for different cities. Okay, so there's one curve per, per city here, all right? There are not 12 of them because we choose five or six of, or seven of them for that. Um, but essentially, one way to think about this is the following. If there were, uh, if there are lots of paths with long, if there are lots of long paths, what does it tell us? Uh, maybe one way to think about this is that there's some ISP that is not doing a good job. 
essentially because then that ISP if you are a customer for that ISP uh, you have a long path okay then people will probably shift from that ISP to something that performs better so this is uh, the paths are, 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 are the lengths are not that different they are okay so now let's look at one difference between um, the internet at large and uh, the or, or sorry the graph view and the path view this this is the total degree of edges um, here and this is the total degree ranks when I what what I mean by total degree of edges is the following you take an edge and you take the sum of degrees of one side and add it to the sum of degrees of the other other node okay that's what I mean by total degree Oh, sorry. This is actually this is not. This is just for the nodes. This is the total do, total degree for the nodes, which means the total in degree, the sum of the in degree and the out degree. Okay, that plot is coming later on. So now you see that as observed earlier as well. This is not just for the first time it has been observed. And this is log log plot. So this is roughly a straight line again for different cities. Uh, so it's a power law. However, if you go to the path degree, so number of paths going through a particular node. Okay, and this holds for nodes and edges as well. It's definitely uh, qualitatively different because you see this hump here. What is path degree? Oh, the path degree is the number of paths going through a node. In our, yeah, this is a, this is the number of edges. So, so the path degree is way different because, uh, and and in particular, what is happening is that there are fewer larger nodes, right? Because the mass is distributed towards the smaller nodes. Okay. Um, and we'll see a consequence of that. As in, in, in essence, what, what you have is that you have smaller cuts in, in city nets, even fractionally, because you have smaller number of large nodes, right? Because the mass on the, in the tail is small, as compared to, for example, the total degree. Okay? So the in degree, out degree, and the total degree distributions are power laws. I only showed you the total degree distribution. Um, uh, the, 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 oh, in, in, in case I didn't explain this, uh, what this is is basically you arrange the the nodes in decreasing order of their uh, path degree, and you plot that or the log of that versus uh, the path degree. And it has been it is well known that for the internet it's a power law, so that's why you see a, a almost linear relation here. Yes. So when people suggested a model for this creation of the power law, this copy paste model. Yes. Uh, I was wondering if there are any ideas of such models for the distribution of the path degrees that you see. We don't have them, but, but no, there's one area that we have future research. One we want to come up with, for example, they have the uh, the the rich gets richer model. We want to come up with something that has, but this is definitely less heavy-tailed than power law. Okay, so yeah, it's, uh, something that we have thought about, but we have I don't have a result to show you. Did you try fitting it to other close cousins of power law, like the log normal? Uh, log normal we have not, but uh, that's uh, at, again this is stuff in the future. Uh, however, at this point, it's more qualitative than quantitative for uh, reasons that I'll also explain uh, later on. But yeah, that's again something that we would want to do is to fit to some of these curves. Um, one problem, uh, but but so much is clear that it's qualitatively way different, and we'll see some consequence of that shortly. Next few slides. Something you would have already guessed. I know why this is taking so long. There's lots of points. It's a scatter plot. Okay, so now let's look at whether, if you look at a, an edge or a node and look at its degree, is that a good indication of the number of paths going through it? And the answer is no, actually, because if you look at the total edge degree, and this is the edge path degree, what this means is the total edge degree is the sum of the degrees of, uh, so consider uh, uh, an edge UV. So the total edge degree of, 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 of E is just the degree of U plus the degree of E. Okay? So, and the degree, path degree of an edge is just the number of paths going through it. Okay? So what this means is just because an, an, uh, an edge has a lo lots of connections, doesn't mean a lot of paths are going through it. Okay? It might be true for someone, but it's not necessarily true. You could have uh, an edge that has only a few neighbors, yet you have a lot of paths going through it. Okay? So that's what, that's what this means, because there's, there's just no strong correlation at all. And you can replace this with uh, total node degree and still is qualitatively the same. Do you have a final picture of that based on whether the edge is P to I or I to I or any other? Uh, I might, but not in this presentation. I might. Uh, we have lots of, uh, I want to finish in time. I'm already over time. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, 
one thing, okay, so this is just uncovering different structures. I know it's a, look, it's a bit unstructured for, uh, for, for that. But again, another uh, property that we have is, um, let's do some definitions. Uh, the, when I say last router, it means the inode, the, the router, immediately pre preceding the destination. Okay? And when we say a block, when we think of a block of IP address, which uh, we say it's homogeneous if all paths to all nodes in that block have the same last router, which basically means that a block is homogeneous if basically, as far as routing is concerned, it's the same route from everywhere. Okay? Uh, finding this is not trivial, but you can randomly sample and find it, and we did do that. A cluster router is basically a last router that serves a homogeneous block. Okay? So what we have found is that cities have a lot of cluster routers. So 55% of Austin, for example, of Austin routers are cluster routers. And the number is higher for, I mean, it's roughly in, in that range. So what that means is that the last hop router corresponds, have, uh, the, the, uh, the fraction of the total number of routers, the cluster routers are, uh, are significant. Also, that pretty much means that the number of homogeneous blocks is significant. So lots and lots of blocks, a lot of the blocks are homogeneous, which also lends credibility to, first of all, our block sampling, because we basically need one, one path for each block. Uh, but also uncovers a structure that we like to call as the apartment hypothesis. Maybe what is happening is you have these apartments where lots of people live. And again, this is an analogy I'm giving you. And then they are served by a common router. And basically what the, uh, the ISP is doing is uh, bringing a path to that. And then from there, you have connections to all of that. All right? Um, as you see, you know, almost 80% of pretty much every city is homogeneous. City blocks is homogeneous. Again, these, this was found experimentally. Uh, just a short uh, note on the, the, the robustness analysis. Um, uh, and this is a consequence of the, 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 the path uh, distribution being less heavy tail. Uh, what we did was, we took the city analysis and the question we asked is, how many nodes do I need to dis delete uh, so that 80% of the traffic roughly is Dis is, is deleted. We did it for two things. One is the number of paths, and the other is block uniform weighting, where each block is assigned a weight of one, a traffic weight of one, and then all, and it is distributed equally to all the uh, paths coming into that block. Okay, and the results are pretty similar. Okay, uh, that's why I'm showing only one. So the topmost one is when I do a target node. So I know all information about all the paths, and I'm trying to delete the one that has that gives me the most. So it's like a set cover prop. Uh, uh, heuristic essentially and these are just heuristic because that's it's NP complete to find out uh, okay so I do using uh, the target node so I'm using the the number of paths going through a node as the heuristic this is the number of paths going through an edge as the heuristic this is the number of uh, and this is the in degree of a node is the heuristic so you see that if you use the in degree since it's not that well correlated with the with the number of paths there's a significant gap it's only 40 percent roughly Oh, sorry, 50 percent roughly. This is about close to 80 percent. Okay, so think of an attacker. If you're just looking at the graph view, okay, you are probably not going to do as well for the attacker as the as uh, if you were looking at the path view. Again, it argues for the path view. These are just random, just for comparison. You just pick nodes randomly, and the internet, because of the power law uh, structure, is known to be resilient. In that case. Target, you mean adversarially chosen? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. And that's, that's, that's factor of 10 to the negative 3 there? Yes, oh yeah. This is, yeah, so a uh, good point. That's my so punchline. Half, half a percent of the This is half a percent, and it deletes 80% of the traffic. Okay? For the internet, if you look at the, like, Felicis, Felicis graphs and stuff like that, this is order of magnitude larger. So you have still the same. Uh, the same curve, except you might have to, I forget the exact number, but it's at least one order of magnitude larger. Okay? The geographic distribution of nodes and how it would uh, be impacted. So I know there's a couple buildings in downtown San Jose that if you park the truck bomb outside, then you can ah, it Ah, now. See, that is very hard to do. We, that's the first idea we have. We are going to plot it. The problem is, the way geolocation works, the, the, uh, the granularity is not that much. So it will give you, okay, it's within 10 miles or so. Okay. So you didn't have more accurate information. No, no. And, and no one has, I, to my knowledge. But that's an interesting thing to do because if you can do that, we can do quite a few things. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah we didn't have that. We, all we knew was that this is in the city and this is outside the city. But okay. I used to be able to sever the East Coast from the West Coast for civilian voice traffic by only cutting four places wow. in the U.S. Yeah, that was in the early 90s. They fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just uh, some more uh, definitions. Uh, again, looking at the uh, vulner vulnerability structure, uh, when we say the waste of a city, so the structure that we have is sort of goes in, is, is sort of there are the few paths coming in or few edges coming in, and it branches out. Okay, and then think of it as you have highways coming in, and then when you go to your home, it sort of sort of branches out into small streets. Okay, that's the mental model that I have. So um, like the waste of a city. So this is what we call the waste, and then you have the the, the hip there, and then the waste of the city is just the smallest number of routers that carry 80% of the traffic. Okay. Um, uh, the hip of a city is the num smallest number of end hosts that account for 80% of the traffic. Okay, and what we have is basically a small uh, waste, uh, large hip structure. Um, again, this is the uniform block weighting that I mentioned earlier as well. Uh, it's not important. The results are pretty consistent actually, even without that. Um, so just to give you an idea of uh, of of uh, the waste to hip, this is these are these are not fractions. These are percent. This is half a percent, essentially. Really, really small, except for a few, and these are, if you look at it, these are small cities. So that what is happening is, um, uh, two things happening, there are fewer number of hosts here uh, compared, compared to the number of, of routers. And there's all, also, I'm, I'm, I'm figuring there's also some uh, error that we have. Um, related to that, we have a do, what we call a DOSI meter index for uh, it's basically denial of service attack meter, which basically say, okay, if, 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 uh, if adversarially chosen, you delete, you know, k nodes. Okay, k is fixed. Say ten nodes. If the adversary, where will it impact the most? So, think of it as how many people will it, is it going to impact? So, it's the ratio of the population to the waste essentially. Because remember, waste is 80% of number of routers that carry 80% of the traffic. Okay, and we see that there is a correlation between the size and the population and the, and, and, and the size and the and the dosimeter here. So, where larger cities so larger cities have smaller doses. Small is bad because it means that it is, um, sorry, hold on, <laughs> uh, population. So these are larger cities and small is good, sorry. Large is bad. Large is bad, which means that with, with a few nodes, you can disrupt a lot, lot of population. But larger cities are actually worse. Okay, there's a downtrend here. This is an outlier. I think it was Washington or so. Um, however, note that all of this is <laughs> all of, uh, a related one that you might think of is the, the, is the ratio of uh, the incoming to the outgoing in a certain sense. So the ratio of I to D edges, sorry, I to D edges to B to I edges. Okay? So our we are claiming that this is much larger than this. Okay? These are sort of similar ones. Again, this represents the degree of disaggregation uh, when the paths come into the city. Um, Anyway, um, one interesting thing that we got is that this is, this is not, I mean, this is from the data. We're plotting the actual data. So that is very surprising. But what we found is that look, if you look at the in-degree, out-degree, and total distribution, for these values, actually, you can have a, uh, for these values, you can actually prove that the edge skew, which is, which is the ratio of I to D to the B to I edges, so ratio of uh, your uh, branch streets, your uh, local streets to the highways. Okay, so that ratio is actually for these values log n, which is not which, which is why this is a straight line because this is log uh, this is a log scale. Okay, so this you can prove um, not that it's not that non trivial. Uh, it's pretty trivial to prove actually. Um, okay, so uh, I was going to talk a little bit about this uh, theoretical part of our work, uh, but I'll just end with uh, the one result that we have. So we have shown that um, city nets are vulnerable uh, in certain restricted sense. Uh, note that we don't have traffic, so we're only looking at what we have. <coughs> so the obvious question is, can you detect large-scale attacks? Um, so just defining one large-scale, uh, reasonable large-scale attack is the following. Uh, we say that an attack is k epsilon attack on a path network P if the adversary can remove up to k nodes or edges, k network elements, and he must cause a depression, uh, a disruption, sorry, to at least an epsilon fraction. So if it is 10 and 0 0.2, by removing 10 edges, you must disrupt at least 20% of the traffic. 
of the, of the, of, of the paths. Okay? So this is the kind of attacks that we have been looking at. Um, it's inspired from work by uh, Kleinberg, who looked at the same thing for graphs, not for paths. Okay? Um, so one application might be uh, that you install monitors on chosen endpoints, a small number of monitors, so that any large-scale disruption shows up. Okay? Um, so what we can prove is that for every path network and for each k and epsilon, there exists detection sets of size that polynomial in k and epsilon, uh, inverse of epsilon, as independent of the size of the path network, so independent of the number of nodes and independent of the number of, of uh, edges. Um, and in fact, you can uh, you have a simple randomized algorithm that can do that. Uh, it's based on VC dimension and uh, 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 a very strong result by uh, Hausler and Welzel, which I'm not going to define, uh, but that was the proof there. Uh, but basically what we get is that the VC dimension of, of a set system that we define, again, I'm not defining that, what VC dimension is for lack of time, but we get that the VC dimension of uh, a set system, a relevant set system that we define is K log C. And Hausler and Welsel gives, gives us that it's a polynomial in this and epsilon prime. So what you have is that it scales up very well with your path network. It doesn't depend on the size of the path network only uh, at all. It only depends on your k and epsilon. Uh, one oh, crucial thing that we need to know is that what is the c? I didn't define what the c is. It's a technical condition that we need to have in our path network, which is the following. Think of two paths. They merge and they uh, deviate and they merge again. C bounds the number of times they can do that. So it can't be arbitrary. It can't depend on n. Otherwise, we don't have our result. So that's the co confidence coefficient. However, because internet paths are destination based, based, we have found that you never see more than three confluence. Okay? So once you have that, um, you have small detection sets. Uh, just to conclude, uh, we have studied uh, city nets as important subnetworks uh, of the internet. Uh, crucial difference between our and other work is that we have a path view and we have a methodology to make realistic maps from, uh, of city nets. Uh, we have uh, taken pains to ensure the statistical validity uh, as much as we can. Uh, the cities have uh, show structures that are, uh, that is different from the structure of the internet at large, in particular the small waste large hip uh, structure, and they seem more vulnerable, an order of uh, uh, magnitude more vulnerable uh, than uh, internet at large. Yeah. So if you want to attack a smaller portion, you can do it easily. In terms of fractional as well, right? Remember the, 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 the detection sets are, are fractional. Okay, so uh, that's where uh, my talk ends. Uh, sorry for going over time. Any questions I would be ready to take.